Hello everyone, and welcome to my first official process video. I wanted to do something to give you a little bit more of a full length type peek into my artistic process. Um, now this video is a little bit sped up and today I'm just focusing on showing you how I go about painting the face. So this is basically the second layer of painting on the face of this portrait. Um, but I think it'll be a fun little experiment. I've been wanting to do videos for a while now and before I go out and invest in a better camera and microphones and lighting, uh, I wanted to go ahead and start trying it out, see if this is something that you as my audience might enjoy and if I like the process as well. Uh, so welcome. So today is November 3rd, the day that I'm recording this, and that's election day in the U.S. So if you, like me, are feeling a little bit of anxiety, or if you have been feeling some anxiety in the build-up to this moment uh, in an already very tense year, this is intended to be a few minutes for you to kind of take a breath, to calm yourself in the eye of this storm, take a step back, you know, let the events unfold. For most of us, we have already voted. I voted early. Um, I hope you did as well. And if you haven't, you know, you have the rest of today to go ahead and do that. And there's a lot of contention, obviously, on the elected officials we're all choosing. It's a, a year, a time in American history where we are especially divided. And I wanted to take a moment to consider, you know, what happens if my candidate doesn't get elected. You know, we all feel like we've got a lot writing on this, some more than others. But I wanted to pause and find a way to give myself comfort. And I did that by thinking about other people in politics who give me hope. And I was inspired to go ahead and do a portrait of one of those politicians, in this case, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, I looked up her name and the definition of the name Alexandria is defender of the people. And I thought that was incredibly fitting for her. And it inspired me to paint her as a knight. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how I come up with a concept. So in this case, I was thinking of a knight and I was thinking of the Knights of the Round Table. I did a lot of medieval and Renaissance reading when I was getting my degree. So I often think back to those types of stories. And I seem to remember that each of the Knights of the Round Table had some sort of title. Like, for instance, I'm thinking of Sir Galahad, the Pure, and I couldn't remember any of the other specific titles. So I did some research, like on Lancelot, um, Sir Percival, and tried to look them up, and I could not find anywhere where any titles were mentioned specifically, except for in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> and Sir Galahad the Chaste makes an appearance in that one. But I really like the idea of titles and I wanted to come up with one for this painting. Maybe you all have some suggestions for when she's done. Right now I'm kind of thinking of the People's Night, um, although I may just leave the title of the painting, Defender of the People, it fits so well. I also included a little shout out to AOC's Puerto Rican heritage with the star on top of the triangle symbol on the collar part of the chest plate. You'll see that just below her neck. Additionally, in the background, I decided to go for a depiction of Whitestone Bridge, which is the bridge that spans the gap between parts of the New York 14th Congressional District, which is her district in Congress. So I wanted to include those little details as well, in addition to the longsword. Love a longsword. Um, so my process, I always start, um, well, usually I start with a drawing, especially if I've got a complicated concept that I need to work out ahead, in, ahead of time. And I really like the way that portraits come out, the depth of shadows and, and skin tones that I get if I start with some shading in there. So usually I'll go in with like pencil or colored pencil before I put down the paint to get the shadows laid out. After I get the drawing going, I will take a picture of the drawing and then I usually do a digital mock-up using the photograph in that I'm working from or photographs in Procreate. 
And then what I'll do is I'll overlay that photo over the digital mockup and I'll change the opacity so that I can see through it. And this helps me to get all my lines in the right place. I can see where I need to make corrections to make sure that the face looks right and is recognizable. Um, then I begin painting. Once I get the drawing uh, fixed to my liking, I'll start painting. So I'm going in here with thin layers of acrylic so they're thinned with a little bit of water and then I always add medium just to make sure that in this case a gloss medium to make sure that the paint really adheres to the canvas. Um, when you're painting skin tones like I am here it's always a good idea uh, to, to look for the the undertones, the colors inside of that, that person's face. So for example, AOC has tan skin, but inside of her skin there, is, there are these undertones of reds, pinks, uh, deeper browns, purple shadows, some greens here and there. Uh, and those are present in nearly every face you're gonna look at. So it's always a good idea to, you see me painting patch by patch, I keep going back to my palette to mix into some original colors that I have. I'll usually mix a light, a medium, and a dark, and then I'll add all those undertones as I go, looking for those colors in the face. So you can see there are more greens like on that, the wide part of her cheek that's showing, more pinks around her nose and chin. Um, as you're going, so this, like I said, is my second layer. The first layer is very thin, more water. As you build up, you want to keep in mind the adage of fat over lean. So as you go, you should be adding less water, more paint, and probably more medium. If you're starting with medium, you want to be adding a little bit more or the same amount in each subsequent layer of paint, just so that it adheres properly to the canvas. Um, now I'm a perfectionist. You might be too. A lot of artists are. And for me, that means that I, I can always see something that's still not quite right with my paintings. And in addition to that, I'm a pr procrastinator, which means that I will put off finishing a painting for a long period of time. And that can be a blessing and a curse. Um, a lot of times I end up with so many paintings that just stay unfinished, or it can help me out in that if I let the painting sit for a while, walk away from it, just kind of live with it as it is for a few days, I can see where the errors are and then have time to perfect them. So a good thing and a bad thing. And if you're a perfectionist, your art doesn't look the way you want it to right away, the key is just to practice art. We think of it as something, a talent uh, that you're born with, like you're just gonna, you're a prodigy or you're not basically. It's, it seems to be most people's perspective on artwork and that's just not true. Art is a skill, like sports or an instrument. There are gonna be some people who have a natural pro proclivity, who succeed almost instantaneously, it seems like, and other people who have to work harder at it. And we're all gonna reach different levels, right? And that's why there are so many different types of artwork. There's room for everybody. So I encourage you, you know, when you're feeling stress and anxiety, art has been such a savior for me this year, um, all throughout 2020. And even before that, you know, art helped me with grieving, art helps me to process ideas. It's a nice escape too. And if you're not already making art, there are so many different types of art out there. You can draw, you can make it abstract, you can sketch, you can sculpt, you can paint, you can do so many things, metalworking, woodworking, uh, printmaking, you know, try, try something. I encourage you this year, in a year when we can't do all the things we used to do before, um, to find a venue or an avenue of art, an artistic avenue that works for you. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed, but then I'm totally biased. I love making artwork. Uh, another thing you might have seen earlier in the video when I painted the eyes, they looked a little creepy at first because I actually filled them in with gray. So when you're painting eyes, if you're going for a realistic portrait, um, eyes aren't usually like we want to fill in the whites of the eye. Eyes aren't usually white, white. There are usually some highlights in there, but there's lots of shadows. I mean, the, the eye is an orb and um, to, for something three dimensional, like a sphere, you're never gonna get one flat color. So a lot of making realistic art or semi-realistic art for me is unlearning shortcuts that your mind has kind of forged. We think of eyes as white. We think of skin as, you know, peach, tan, brown, black. We think of skies as blue, but they're not always those exact colors. You really need to stop and re-examine to get things to look more realistic. Also true in politics, it's important to stop and re-examine. I'm wishing you guys all the best and I hope you have a great day. Bye.